Hey folks, hope you're all well. Welcome to the 20 Mr. Tina South video. Uh, two things I do want to say. Firstly, I am still working on the 9.2 proc rates and kind of working out how things are going to look based on the current tier set because uh, I am going to try and compile a full forum detail or full forum post in detail that'll be feedback for Blizzard, which I can then obviously put forward once the PTR is live and hopefully we can test the tier sets so I can kind of corroborate and collect more data. Now, the other part of it is to apologize for this key coming out so late. Um, it is now essentially a week late because uh, I did this last Wednesday, last Thursday. And as a result, the affixes were Fortified, Spiteful, Grievous. Not a particularly nice week for healers and kind of unfriendly to melee. Because you can see there that we've had to use Ring of Peace and Bubble. Another side note with this dungeon is there are moments where there is a collective lag spike and we all freeze in place. Originally, I thought it was just myself, so was communicating it to the guys. And unfortunately, as we find out in a couple of minutes, it's not just me. And it wasn't just like our internet provider either, because we're all on different internets. So, yeah. Interesting key. Still do alright. I'm quite comfortable with it, but, yeah. Because Stitch had to use the ring in the previous pack where I used my bubble, we probably should have talked, so I didn't need to use bubble. But it did cause a delay in doing that monk skip, which cost us a couple of seconds. Because that, that's one of the big problems with a uh, spiteful as a melee DPS. It's not too bad at the end of packs. The problem comes during a pack when you have one or two mobs that die really, really early, cause a spiteful, and that spiteful then targets you. You because you're either in, you're in one or two positions. Then either you physically can't see the mob because there's so many different nameplates. All you can see is the debuff, so you don't know how much space you have to avoid melee. Um, or being melleed by the spiteful and taking a considerable amount of damage or you kite out and lose uptime which given how important uptime is especially when you're running in our case we have essentially four melee and one ranged because holy paladins are considered melee for the purposes of most mechanics it means that only arc has the ability to essentially do or have full uptime on something because he can slow or prevent the spitefuls from getting to him in the first place by just adding a frost shock. Uh, so spiteful is a good affix where you can make the most of hand of hindrance as a paladin, uh, especially as a ret, which is quite useful. Um, Chains of frost and what is it? Disable, I think for monks. Especially if you've got like a little bit of leeway so you can hit them from a range and then just slowly walk away. Which is what I do for the most part. Now, just a slight thing. Generally speaking, with the Infernal or the Incinerator Tormentor ad, you can get away with just having two people kick. Generally, it'll be like Stitch or I will alternate. However, this is one of the first times Stormy has had me actively call kicks. So I said, Stitch, you take first, which is kind of now the default. I'll take second, and ah, he, there was a moment where we all froze in place, which wasn't great. <sighs> but because Stormy's not used to that, Stormy felt he needed to kick as well. Which is fine, it, it, you know, it kicks a kick. But it's just a thing from like our group perspective where generally we try, or the aim is to try and have it so that we, the DPS are more proactive, tank and healer have less to focus about, especially when we start getting to these 20 keys. Because the less stuff that the tank has to worry about, the more we can focus on staying alive. Same with the healer. Which is one of the things I realized because at the, with this being one of the first dungeons I did, I was still running kind of three unholy gems, Kia and Beck. So I just had the DPS, Frost and Blood uh, Dom Sockets equipped and the two unholy utility ones. 
towards the end of the night, I'd actually swapped to r removing my Shard of Off, which I believe is the speed one off the top of my head, and changed it to the Frost Absorb one that gives you a healing absorb for a period of time. Unfortunately, Stitch did die there because we had overlapped, so he's finally rejoined the fight. Which means that things are a little bit hectic. And obviously these mobs are living longer than they should have done. Which is partially on me, because I did have my cooldowns back and could have used them. I know I used my one minute, but I still feel like I probably should have got away with maybe, maybe doing a little bit more. Or using them towards the end of the fight. This hesitation that you can see here is us communicating whether or not we are going to take uh, Oros as well. Because we've obviously sent our Shaman's Primal Elemental Rock Boy to go get the Executioner through the wall. Most, any pet class can do this. So, Unholy DKs, Hunters, Shamans if you're running the Primal Elementalist trait. So you have control over your Elemental. Uh, monks as well, I believe they can do it with Zwen or their spirits if they look over the wall, target it and then hit the go chase button, but that's about it. But you can, you can pull Executioner as a result. Now, here's the thing that we've started doing. If you have an immunity and a taunt with Executioner Varath, what you can do is you can, if you're targeted, so Paladins, this is mainly aimed at us you can bubble or uh, bop yourself and if you communicate with the tank you can taunt the next sever which re massively reduces the amount of damage that your tank is taking now we're still kind of getting used to this so i didn't actually call out the taunt i just immediately did it and stormy taunted back which we get better at doing but it pretty much negates oros Oh, not ours. Execution of Arath's threat to the group. Because he barely does any AoE damage. As long as you get the carnage out. And then the Sever is just a tank buster ability. And if you taunt that, then the tank takes no damage and the healer can focus on DPS. Which makes our two paladin comp, although in places it is detrimental... Because obviously forbearance affects both of our utility. So we are detrimental to each other essentially. Because you can see there that I lay on hand stitch. And I was... Time and I were of the same same opinion. That we were both about to lay on hands in. I got mine off a global faster. So I ended up with a three minute cool, uh, cool down for my lay on hands. But... If Stitch had needed something else on top of that, say if Stitch had uh, needed a bop or something else for mechanics, or if we'd done it to the tank, our forbearance affect each other. Also, things like Devotion Aura don't stack, so I am actually currently running around with Retribution Aura on, which is fine. It's, it's a little bit pointless if you don't intend on dying, but... For Ingram Malok, in hindsight, what I could have probably done is maybe used consecration or uh, concentration aura uh, if I had it equipped to the finesse to remove fears or reduce the duration of fears. Unfortunately, there's not many situations where that actually happens. <laughs> kind of sucks. Uh, burst phase, not really a whole hell of a lot for me to say here. Unfortunately, at a 20 on a, as a fortified we as paladins we run out of steam especially seeing as i'm not using my divine resonance legendary i am using tempest of the lightbringer which means that i really run out of speed part of me is kind of interested to see how we play out in 9-2 with double legendaries Because depending on... Because my my current theory surrounding M+, is that we are likely to see Necrolord take the foreground for certain, certain affixes and certain weeks, whereas we will remain Kyrian for others. 
Now, the reason for that is because taking the tier set into account, during tyrannical weeks, we're more likely to see the more sustained build of throwing throwing as many spenders out as we can. We might still keep Final Reckoning, but we're probably going to move away from the whole one minute era of build, which on the surface removes Divine Toll's strength. However, we have to bear in mind, or more accurately, I had to bear in mind, that Mechanicus's capstone trait means that in a Mythic Plus setting, especially if you're consistently fighting, you know, four or five mobs at a time, which you are in M+, Divine Toll will line up with both your Wake of Ashes generally and your Seraphim main. So, if Seraphim still becomes the go-to talent, we're going to be able to use Seraphim Divine Toll pretty much every 45 seconds. Wake resets are going to be a thing, and we might use Sanctified Wrath, but still be able to use Divine Toll on cooldown. Five of Holy Power, it means more uh, Divine Storms. Divine Resonance is, or again, Divine Resonance, more Judgments. More Judgments, more Holy Power. So, kind of that feedback loop. But Tyrannical Weeks, if especially higher Tyrannical Weeks, we may see that swap to Necrolord for the same reason of raiding, because we're not playing around the whole one minute build anymore, and we're instead focusing on using Vanquish's Hammer as the Mastery Bonus, Necrolord Shield, and on top of that, the ability to essentially prioritize damage through Vanquish's Hammer's effect. Now, Obviously, that's 9.2 testing, and I'm looking forward to that, and maybe a little bit of maths pushing on my end. But, something to, you know, look forward to. Bit of a waffle, I know, but kind of falls off the Ingram Alloc fight, because one of the big things for us, especially in uh, fights, at, boss fights at the moment, is we, like, our damage is very much like... By, uh, probably about 10 seconds into the fight, we do a crap ton of damage for eight, eight or so seconds, and then it dips off. And then we need to wait another two minutes or another minute before we can do another go, and then another minute after that. So for our like big DPS windows, we're essentially expecting fights to last one minute, 10, two minute, 10, and pretty much everything for uh, every minute on. With obviously multiples of two being our primary, like, big, big values. So, for the Ingram Alloc fight, which in the past I have pretty much just dominated the meters, and in an 18 Mythic Plus, uh, 18 Mists I did the other day, I did. Um, ended the fight on 21k DPS. Absolutely shredding everybody else, but that's because the fight played to our fight length. Had it have gone on any longer, Stitch or Arc would have out. Um, outlasted me like they did to, uh, during this key. So, 9.2 will be interesting, especially if our sustain is improved. We may see a slight shift in how viable we are as DPS going forward. Hopefully for the better. I'd hate it if we got worse. But, we'll get there. So there are already a few conversations on the forums about those things. I apologise about my yawning. Um, hindsight thing here again, this mist film matriarch really throws me whenever we go through mists, and I've noticed it a few times, because this fight length is long enough that I used my wake of ashes during this fight, and my seraphim thinking 45 seconds, 45 seconds is about as far as I think this, this mob was going to last. The reality is it's just coming back now, so what I could, like, it's one of these fine things, I could have used my one minute um, and actually done more damage to it, but at the same time it would have died faster, so we would have gone into this pack with me having less cooldowns. Now, the other part of this at the moment, and I'm starting to realise it a lot as well, is because Stitch and Ark are so good at doing AoE damage, my priority damage is kind of pointless. 
I say pointless. It's it's not, and it definitely comes into handy when like comes into hand when we're fighting bosses. However, like one of the statistics I currently have at the moment is for two of the twenties I did this even uh, on this particular night that we did this mist, I cast fourteen execution sentences in one dungeon, and I cast eighteen execution sentences in the other with four or five of them missing. So I had the casts, but the hits didn't match up one for one, which means that I am execution sentencing a target and it is dying before the execution sentence goes off. Now, I'm generally trying to execute the target with the most health. Unfortunately, Stitch just got clobbered there by aggro, I believe. Which means that a Briarthorn cord gets off, because I've uh, I was trying to get my execution sentence off to prove a point. But, uh, well, I was also focusing the tender because I didn't want the healing cast getting off. But it's a play-by-play -play thing. In the future, be a little bit more wary. Like, I, again, kind of going back to the whole utility thing, like, I could have sacrificed him. I can be a lot more, a lot more aggressive with my sack when I'm in a group with a holy paladin. And you can do this in all walks of life as Paladin, or as a Red Paladin when you're playing with Holies. It doesn't matter whether it's Raid, Mythic Plus, or anything. Generally, your utility itself is going to be overlooked a lot of the time, because it is a healer's job to provide that utility. And the type of utility we bring is essentially designated as healer utility. We have damage reduction, we have healing, we can provide temporary immunities to physical mechanics. And not only that, but our Devotion Aura is a 3% damage reduction, just flat. So that utility as a Red Paladin is generally forgotten about. So there could be or should be situations where I am proactively, like if Stitch is about to go into a pack and I know he's about to pop off, put Sack on him. Like there have been dungeons in the past where... I have pre-bopped him, but those are usually times when he calls for it, or we're playing with an undergeared tank in some way, shape, or form. So, kind of my own criticism going forward, should be a little bit more proactive in the use of my cooldowns. Now, here is one of those things where, because we have so many AoE abilities going out at any given point, trying to CC the mobs were slightly difficult for Mistcaller, and obviously, if the fixation reaches you it freezes everybody there's been cases where i've had to t absorb it with bubble because obviously you can immune the freeze and have instead frozen stitches um storm earth and fire replicants and also frozen zwen himself heads are not immune to it so you have to be careful when you soak hence i ran out for freeze tag that particular illusion was a good one. Thankfully, it was out of the consecrations and out of any potential AoE that we could throw out. Not too much else to say here, except... Actually, I say that. Here, we I tried to be clever, and this is one of the fails that were kind of on me. That way, execution sentence hit for 29k. Now, what I had tried to do is I tried to we empt the execution sentence thinking that the imaginary clone or the illusionary clone was going to die faster so i could have pumped some damage into mistcaller now 29k still isn't too bad it's better than most of my templars verdicts and is still a chunk of damage however it's one of those things where it's like it could have done a lot more like my general average for execution sentence is around 50 to 70k now so 29k is that you know it's less than well we'll say about 50 percent effectiveness which isn't horrible but personally could be better and again kind of looking at my overall dps at the moment it's 8.6k now i need to be doing considerably better i think if i'm to be pushing the higher keys not entirely sure how Sitch stitch survived there uh all credit goes to time because Stitch was frozen, got caught by Beam, and I believe took quite a lot of other damage as well. 
So, all credit to Titan at the time for keeping Stitch alive there with only two deaths at the moment, and we're at Miss Cola. Now, if memory serves, this becomes a clusterfuck. So, at this point, we're, we're quite confident. We've got one boss to go. We've got a couple of trash packs. Ten minutes to go. Feeling pretty good. Now, something I have learned countless times as a paladin. I should probably have a demount macro aura at this point. Just be like, cancel mount. We, as a paladin, with slightly faster movement speed, and same with death knights, you can just instantly die if you go off that edge. Because there is a point at the very, very front of the pool that looks underwater, but you actually hit it like it's ground. Which is just instant death. Some classes like Monk can actually just flat roll off. Landing next to the root and will finish or will land at about 3% health. It's really weird. Now because Stitch is running back, because we haven't done the acorn. This pack takes a while. And as a result... We did have the. We did have a few kicks go off. Now, that for me is just me being a wheelchair and not getting out fast enough and thinking that because I'd been knocked uphill, I'd have been safe. Instead, I was knocked uphill and to the left, which meant I just got hindered. Now, the delay here in releasing was a discussion about whether or not we could be rezzed because Stitch had just got back, but my corpse was off the edge. So, unfortunately, my bad. Now, one benefit of being Paladin with all our auras is for this bit, I can make myself go a little bit faster. Not much, but a little bit. So, we'll just speed up. Arcus run back to activate the acorn because I'd got back to the group. And the pack was dead. Now, we've had a couple more deaths, and because that pack was slow to die, we're at seven minutes. But it's fine. Three packs to go. And the dude dies. One thing I have been on and iron about, actually, and it's more of a question to you guys is any rets higher that might be watching this. What where do your stats kind of sit? Because I seem to have varying success. Some dungeons I will run like ridiculously high verse and mast. I feel like I'm practically unkillable outside of my own stupid mistakes. But my DPS doesn't seem particularly high. Overall anyway. But if I then swap to a much higher or a crit build to the point where champion's brand gives me crit rather than mastery... I feel like my overall DPS is higher, and I don't, I don't know if that's just because I'm a Tauren, so more crit equals just flat more damage. You can see there that I use my sacrifice, but it feels counterintuitive. It feels like I'm trying to front load everything into my wings windows. Like, I believe in the 20 DOS we did, there was a pack where I hit about 53, 54k DPS. Um, but I'll obviously need to review that and send that out to you guys afterwards. But, yeah, 7.9k overall DPS for a 20, I believe, is very, very low for a ret and shouldn't be. Now, this is one of those problems with aura swapping. We've just had two deaths, which means I should have had wings, but because we came, because I got back to the group having swapped to Crusader Aura, I'm not in Retribution Aura. One of those stupid moments, to be honest. So, I missed out on a free wings. Thankfully, we got combat reses, so it was fine. We made use of them. You can see I hand a hindrance a shade, but it was the wrong shade and wasn't the one targeting me. It's fine. Four minutes, three percent to go. I'm sure a few of you have probably worked out 
the end result, but I won't spoil it for those of you that haven't. Not too much to say here with only the one stag horn to, to kick. Stitch was stood in the green stuff and was getting slapped, but Stormy needs to kite them out a little bit more. Because we didn't realize, well, more accurately, none of us realized just how different the damage was, us accidentally, like, clipping one of those pools. Um verse, you know, the 17s and 18s we've done in the past. And it's quite a remarkable jump. So, personal personal failure and not being aware of your surroundings become much more important. And this is a lesson I learned during this fight, if memory serves, because I am a complete moron. And if it wasn't this one, it was the 18 I did the other night. Kind of wish that kick had come out sooner, so I could have got the extra bonus while I was in execution sentence, but... That can't be helped, unfortunately. Now, the consumption could have been kicked sooner, but with Stormy being a Boomkin Affinity Bear, he likes to utilize it where possible to do damage. So, during the consumption, he actually went out and hit Moonkin form and convoke. Did he convoke? Yes, he convoked. Two minute cooldown. Now, fixates on me, so I'm stood next to Stormy here. I tried. You can see there that I hovered over Stitch name because I tried to lay on hands him, but I had a minute left on my own personal lay. So, was unable to help him. In hindsight, I think I might have done a little bit more DPS had I been playing Mechanicos. Because there's an argument to be made for Pelagos and Mechanicos at the moment. Um, with Pelagos obviously prioritizing single target and Mechanicos prioritizing AoE. Given it's a fortified week and I was using Divine Tempest, he should have been running Mechanicos. Plus, you just get a flat 3% damage bonus anyway. Which isn't bad. From a personal play perspective, though, the Pelagos minigames I need to be more conscious of. Because I am letting it slide in places where I really shouldn't be. You can see also that we have the debuff from Sogodon. So there are parts where this is hurting a lot more. Like, I very nearly get myself killed there because I didn't see the green thing underneath the boss as I jumped in. But we go for it. And we did it. We timed it. Timed one of our 20s. Now, obviously, I do have a few others to review, but I won't get them all out today. So look forward to that over the next few days. To capstone this particular video, and to do two things in one, we'll also have the weekly news. Because I'm obviously sad and doing this on the 24th, the 11th, 21, which is obviously the Wednesday reset if you're in Europe. Uh, and unfortunately, no real news to report. Uh, priority is M+, and obviously getting the World of Warcraft data up while trying to find a guild. I think I mentioned at the start of this particular video the i may be raiding this evening if you come to stream hopefully we are and hopefully that means sylvanas progress but we shall see other news though warrior is coming along rather well as a backup character got a 252 two-handed weapon from his mythic plus chest and also potentially down the route of boosting the Warlock as well only needs a couple of bits of gear and then you may start seeing a couple of Warlock keys. That thing might as well earn me some gold if nothing else will. In the meantime though, hopefully I'll catch you tonight on stream. If not, have a good week and I hope you had something good in your chest folks. Take care and have a good one.